Now, I'm going to move quickly on to the next session, which is going to be um, a quick, quick fire with several different presenters. I'm going to um, introduce all of them at once so that I don't have to keep popping up and down. So this is an important topic. It's been referenced several times this morning, um, local care, and in particular, the integration between health and social care um, in the delivery of local care. So we've got three people to come and uh, speak to us uh, about that in quick succession. First of all, Caroline Selkirk, who really has provided a huge amount of personal leadership to local care. She's also uh, the Medway CCG um, Accountable Officer. We've got Anu Singh from uh, KCC, Director of Adult Social Care. And we've also got Ian Sutherland, Director of Children and Adult Services from Medway Council. So I'm not going to keep popping up and down in between the three of them so would you each come up in appropriate turn and then take your seats for the grilling later on thank you caroline's first So thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to come and talk about local care. It was really heartening to hear uh, both Karen and Chris this morning talk about the real importance of local care in, in the new models of care. We know that the current system we have uh, is really struggling. We know that people in the acute sector are struggling, uh, but we know that people in primary care are struggling. And we know that when we look at our colleagues uh, in social care, they're struggling to manage the demand. And we haven't even touched on people in the voluntary sector who are out there supporting people. So we know the current model that we've got really isn't going to, to do what we need to do. We need to do something different. And both Chris and uh, Karen talked about that. So the model that we have uh, put out in terms of, of uh, local care is one which we've co-produced together. Across Kent and Medway, there are lots of examples of everybody working on working up their model of uh, local care, us all doing that individually, pockets of things that were good, but not actually maybe us all being quite as comprehensive as we needed to be. So what we did was we engaged in a programme with, with everybody across the system, and together we co-produced this model, which has got eight interventions in terms of local care, um, which we recognised that we need to look at prevention of ill health, we needed to look at early intervention, we needed to make sure that we were thinking about people's health and well-being, and we needed to think about how we integrated care and made it closer to home. And the little logo on the bottom, uh, Dorothy is the, the lady on the, on the left-hand side, and all these other people are there supporting Dorothy. So the most important thing is they're all sitting on a couch, and it's Dorothy's couch. It's not one that belongs to us. And it's easy for us to say that we all want to work in that more integrated way, but it's actually quite hard to do. And we shouldn't um, chastise ourselves too much for that. It, it, it's, we, what we need to do is take on the challenge and say, well, we're going to get better. Now, I have to confess that in Medway, I've actually added a dog to that logo. And the reason is not just because I happen to be a big dog lover myself and I've got dogs, but actually what's important to Dorothy may less be about what's the matter with her physically, but what is, the ma what is important to her, what matters to her as an individual. So actually for lots of people, you know, that their pets, their family, all of those things are really, really important to them. And if we ask people what their, their aims were, it might not be some of the things that, that we think of. It might be, I want to go to the lunch club so I can see my friends because that's part of, of, of me being part of my community or I want to go to my, to my allotment. But what we do know is that over 90% of care is provided in primary care. Um, and we also know that one of the big drivers that drives people into health and social care is loneliness. And that is not something which is cured by pills and operations. And so we can't have a model going forwards that doesn't acknowledge the bigger social context in which people uh, live their lives and their importance of that and for us to provide a very different offer. And so it's, it's really important that we recognise that local care isn't just a little bit of tinkering with what we were doing before. So it's important as always, to think about where do you start as a ta at task like this? You can't um, do everything all at once. Where, where do you, you start in to, 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 to do this? And it's really important, I think, to try and segment your population, try and understand the challenges that people face. So this model, as you see, divides into children, adults, and older people. And across the top, we've got people who are generally healthy. Then we have people with one long-term condition. Uh, and then we have people with a number of complexity of long-term conditions. The number in the middle is the, the, the cost that we spend per head of population. 
The figure on the left-hand side in the box shows the population in thousands, and the, the other figure shows the amount of money we spend in millions. So what we've done is we recognise we're in a system that's financially challenged, so we need to start thinking about not only where can we provide better care, but where can we do that and also release money. And so we focused on the bit at the bottom, which is um, older people. And together, we have uh, designed a model looking at the best, not only in the UK, but in, uh, across the world, uh, looking at all of the evidence and designed a model which uh, will help us provide a better service for those people and to do that in a way which is more cost effective. Now, it's been quite clear that actually, um, as somebody else mentioned earlier, life expectancy across uh, Kent and Medway is, is very variable. So some people we find in particular areas of, of Kent in their 50s may experience some of the difficulties that people in old, who are older in another part also face. So it's become clear to us that most people are implementing the model not just for older people, but also for um, adults with complex needs. So we very much recognise, and I'm sure you're all the same, I, constantly if you speak to patients across my career, people tell us the same thing. Could you just talk to one another? Could you just try and coordinate what you're doing together? Could you stop asking me the same questions all the time? And could you try and think about what might be important to me as opposed to filling in your form? People have been saying that to us forever. And we're not really that great at managing to, to be as joined up as we need to. It's not because we don't want to be, because we all kind of sign up to that principle, but we really struggle to do it. So it's really important that the new models for care are about driving us together to think about how we, how, we, how we work together and that we actually use our resources in a way which patients want and that, that, so that we're actually not holding the people clogging up Dorothy's sofa, but we're actually doing something that might be helpful to her in a more coordinated fashion. So this is the model uh, that, we, that we have, uh, that we've developed with people over time, uh, and it shows the multidisciplinary team. The multidisciplinary team is the, the core model of how we provide a different service for people uh, with frailty. And you will have seen this, I'm sure, in a number of presentations, so I won't um, go through that in enormous uh, detail. So we talked about, we've got a model, we've got a model which we've designed together. But actually what we need to do now is we need to put that into practice. And that means that we need to build on the many examples, and there are lots of great examples across Kent and Medway, and you'll be hearing, you'll hear about some of them earlier, you'll hear about some more of them shortly, that are, that are doing this kind of thing. But if we keep going at the rate of rollout that we've currently got, the system will crash before we manage to get to the point that we need to get to. So we really do need to recognise that we've got to scale up. And for those of you who, 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 who follow Don Berwick, he's very keen on, clear about that. You really have got to think, how do we actually get to scale and do that more quickly? So integrated health and social care is very much part of that model. And so the next two presentations from my colleagues in Kent County Council and Medway Council is to talk to us about, well, how are we actually doing that on the ground? Because all change is local. So if we can't see it in our local system, then it's, then it's just good words. Um, good afternoon, everybody. So just following on from Caroline's presentation on local care to give you a little bit of a focus about how it's happening in Medway. And I suppose one of the things we wanted to focus in on was that um, in addition to STP, we've had strong political leadership within both the councils saying we need to have a really clear vision around adult social care. And I think the best news is that those visions align clearly with what our health colleagues are saying. So in terms of Medway, Councillor Brake, who's our lead member for adult social care, asked me when I arrived in Medway about two and a half years ago, be clear about supporting me to develop a strategy for adult social care. And I've tried to stick up on this slide what that has been distilled into. Um, a bit about Medway, our population is 270,000, so we're about a sixth of the STP footprint. And in Medway, we're providing care and support to about 2,600 people with adult social care needs. That's about 1% of our total population, and about a third of those receive their care in residential or nursing home care. Um, 
We have an advantage in that we work closely with Caroline as the accountable officer for Medway CCG. And co-terminosity with our CCG colleagues, I think, have helped in terms of ensuring that we align around a local care model that works for people in Medway. And as we talk about change and the development of ACPs, whilst we understand the importance of that, there is a concern about losing those close working relationships in those larger footprints. So it's important that we continue to focus on that. Uh, personalising has been a really important strand, not just for the STP, but for our adult social care strategy. And I'm going to say a little bit more about how we tried to change our approach to that in Medway shortly. Uh, innovation's been important to us, and innovation isn't always fast food. It isn't always technological, it isn't always more apps on more phones, sometimes it's slow food. And I'm very proud of the work that we've done with an organization called Derek, developing empowered resources in communities, particularly to ensure that community organizations can be part of reform and innovation. We're working with an organization called Who Cares in the Who Peninsula, a remote part of our patch where it's been difficult for us to find providers to deliver care. By working with them, they've found local people who want to be local community resources. And by finding ways of using direct payments differently, rather than to commission care from traditional providers, but by paying a dividend to a community organization that allows them to reinvest in their community, we're finding new and alternative ways of supporting people that keep them at home being supported by people from their local community. And that type of slow food innovation is going to be really important as we travel forward together on this journey. Participation and partnerships will be very important, and we've heard a lot about the partnerships that we need to develop today. As a twin hatter responsible for children and adult services, I suppose I want to say a, a bit about some of the less obvious partnerships. We have nearly 60,000 children in Medway. I work a lot with leaders in education, and they are really interested in the change that's happening in health and health and care. Because actually, what we do in our systems impacts on the learning outcomes for children in schools every day. So it's important as we move forward that we really focus on hearing some of those harder to reach voices in terms of this. But I also wanted to say a little bit about carers. Of that 270,000, about 10% completed the census two years ago to indicate that they were providing substantial care to a loved one in their community. It's really important that we hear more about what carers need. We all know that they provide as much, if not more, than the formal paid carers in our systems. Our ability to support them to continue will be ever more important. I think the integration piece is really important and leadership at all levels is something I'll come back to. But recently, and I was glad to hear Chris commend Medway this morning, I think through much closer working in Medway and over the last two weeks, we've been having a daily phone call looking at those delayed people in our system. Oh yes, Dan's nodding at me because she was on those calls as well. There is something about an absolute clarity of focus about what you want to fix. And the senior people in the systems and the organization being focused on those priorities. I was delighted when Ruth said this morning about safeguarding coming up as a theme on Slido. And it's really important as we make these big changes that we ensure that we have safe and stable systems continue to safeguard the vulnerable children and adults in our society as we move forward. So I said I'd say a little bit more about our three conversations and the way that we tried to change how we understand the social care needs of people in our system. And this is a model that's found a lot of favor with our health colleagues and is shaping some of our thinking about how we'd have joint and integrated assessment. Our social care staff completed a 27 screen assessment on people for their social care needs. Frankly, what we clearly understood and what was known within our system was we didn't need 27 screens. It wasn't a useful way of us getting to hear what people really needed or more importantly, maybe what they most wanted and it didn't add value to our understanding of their needs. So we've moved to a model that's been used by other local authorities, particularly Essex and um, um, uh, West Berkshire, to try and really focus in on three conversations. If you're in a crisis, what do you need us to do to stabilize it? 
if we can help you to go back to having ordinary support near to home, how can we find that for you? And if those two things haven't worked for you, what do we need to do with you in terms of our long ongoing long-term support? This slide is only there really to highlight two things. As Caroline described the local care model, we've realigned our adult care system around, and our structures and systems, around how that local care model will sit. But most importantly, that will allow conversations within primary care practices and other local settings to ensure that we're developing local leadership that joins up in a multidisciplinary way conversations around individuals so that we're not just focusing on people, uh, sorry, populations, but also on individuals within our context. And this final slide from me is really just to flag up how working together has helped us to do risk stratification better. And there are a couple of scary figures within this, and the one that I'll finish on is 5,725 people with undiagnosed long-term conditions. So we're clear as a system in Medway, we need to get to know who those people are and how we can help them better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm Anu Singh, and I've recently joined Kent County Council as Corporate Director of Adult Social Care and Health, um, and it will teach me to be the third speaker about the same care model. So a lot of um, what I wanted to cover has already been shared, um, but what we'll do is we'll talk about how in Kent we've tried to pull this together um, as almost a set of principles that informs everything we do around our basic business model in social care. So we've taken uh, something people might be familiar with, the house of care, um, and we've decided to think about all the activities that we do encourage and form partnerships around in three circles. So the first one being around promoting well-being, absolutely no-brainer people live in a family they live in a street they live in a community they have interests we need to find out i think caroline was referring to it earlier we need to find out what matters to them not just what is the matter with them so within um, social care we are trying to flex our business model and understand how can we find out what makes somebody tick, what makes them stay well, what they have um, in terms of their own personal assets or their local assets that can enable them to do the things they want to do, be who they want to be and stay well for longer. There'll always be um, interventions that people need. So we've grouped these services um, and these supports around the theme of promoting independence. So again, what are the short-term interventions that we um, from health and social care can put in place to help somebody do things in their own home, to uh, get through a period of recovery, um, to develop the skills they need to be independent, um, and to do the things that matter to them and their families. And then the final circle, the green circle we've got there, is about supporting independence. So there will always be a need for long-term support and care, but again, trying to frame that in a different way to understand where people are, what other care and support needs they have, how we fit into that bigger um, system is what we're trying to do in our new delivery model. Um, so again, a little bit more information um, around what those three are. What we've done is we've tried to um, take our time and build the right model around the different geographies of Kent. So Ian was talking about slow food, and that's certainly the approach we've taken. We've tried to work out what works for either a subset, a locality, teams coming together, people trialing and piloting new ways of working. Um, in phase one, we introduced a new way of thinking around enablement, so those were the short-term interventions I talked about. We tried to do some very new things around telecare. Uh, I've 
got on the slide something called a promoting independence review, and that again is trying to bake into our everyday operating model a conversation around what people can do, understanding what matters to them and how they can be supported to stay independent, to stay well um, and keep themselves healthy, um, especially, uh, Helen was talking earlier about mental health, but especially that feeling about being in control, being part of something that is deciding what matters to you and what surrounds you and what care you have. Um, really important to put the money on there as well. Obviously, we're part of a very cash-strapped system. Um, working in this way, working with people, trying to understand what people can do, what assets they have, is obviously better for your outcomes, but it's also better for the health and care system. Um, and as we work through phase one and we've worked through phase two, um, which is about delivery models um, uh, being flexed across the county, we've managed to clock up some considerable savings and we're bringing that now into the local care um, integrated model. So just a few things on phase two. Um, I want to talk about shared lives. Who knows what shared lives is? Not that many people. Um, so shared lives, this is one example of one of the things that we want to move into almost as a default uh, for how we operate. So we're moving from almost building-based or service-based um, historic provision into a new way of delivering services and supporting independence by forming partnerships and relationships. So shared lives is literally what it says on the tin. It's sharing your home with somebody uh, potentially who has needs such as learning disabilities, some mental health. Um, I used to be part of a national pilot that was looking at how we use the shared lives model in health. So we can help people to be part of a community. It's a more cost-effective model. It's a much more enabling model and it's a model that has sustainability. And so just picked out that one example there to give a bit of flavour. Um, I was at a session earlier talking about integrating health and social care and we often talk about it as a new thing. Obviously we're not talking about anything new, we're talking about something that has been decades in the making and models that have been in place for decades if not relationships that have always been in place. I think what we're trying to do is we're trying to find out how best we work together, how we move the barriers away that stop us working together, and how we can work together around the individual. And that's truly what we're trying to get right um, in local care. So Caroline was talking about starting with Dorothy, starting with the individual. What we've got on this slide is a sense of actually, we do have some discrete functions that in the NHS, um, we will be discharging that within social services we will be discharging but in the middle the kind of bluish box there are a set of activities that we must absolutely do together otherwise it makes no sense uh, for the citizen it makes no sense for us and there's um, just complete failures of handover of care misunderstanding where we can best put interventions in and also duplication so we've picked uh, working with the local care um, models, care navigation, integrated care into the home, obviously uh, transfers of care, which is the hot topic. Um, really important support for the voluntary sector, should say carers there as well, but actually that relationship, getting that absolutely right and making sure that forms part of the care model and reablement or um, supporting and promoting independence. Um, I'm conscious we've been talking for a long time, so I'm going to just go to... Oh, that's not the slide I was expecting. I was expecting a different slide there. We've been edited down. Um, the, the final remarks I was just going to make was um, that what we're trying to do is we are trying to create delivery models um, that make sense for different geographies. So we've got the high level, we know what works. We've got the operational principles. We want to wrap our services around supporting an individual's assets and their aspirations. The challenge for us is how we get together and we understand what matters, what works locally, and how we can design our um, structure around that. Thank you. And so the, there were just a few uh, closing remarks on, 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 on this part. Um, so 
We've designed the model, we've produced an investment case. That investment case recognises that we can't do any of this if we don't uh, shift money um, from the acute sector into primary care, and we have uh, activity and finances that show how we do that, and that has been signed off by the finance group, so we have a model that we're working to. What we're currently doing now is we're doing a maturity matrix, so we're looking at every system and saying, how are we getting on with implementing the new model, and where are we? And we're at the beginning of that implementation phase, uh, once we've done that, we will, we will be thinking about how do we actually scale up what we're doing. So in every system, there are good things that are going on. How can we get that to the next stage so that the rest of us can all learn from that? And then we'll look at how we can share the learning, because there's lots of very good learning which is going on in Kent and Medbury, but we're not always sharing that as much as, as we might. And I just want to maybe just click back onto the, 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 the slides that Chris put up um, when he was speaking. Um, and this is absolutely true of uh, local care. The first one was, it's about the quality of the relationships. It absolutely is. All change is local. If you don't make this happen locally, it's just a nice model. So it has to be built from the bottom up. There needs to be a willingness to promote. Uh, the patient has been the most important thing and not think about our organisational boundaries. We need to focus on a number of key priorities, which is why we focused on frailty. We need to make rapid progress, which is where I think the matrix comes in and lets us scale up. And we just need to be pragmatic. And, you know, some of the time we're going to get this stuff wrong and that'll be OK, but it doesn't mean that the model is wrong. We just need to find out how to do it better. So that, um, so in, in ending this, can I, I have the opportunity to, to introduce to you somebody who's been doing this and, and doing it at a bigger scale than many of us. So uh, Dr. John Ribchester, who's here um, from Encompass um, and uh, is going to come and talk to us about some really exciting stuff that's been going on. And if you were ever any doubt that we could do it, John will show you that, that we can.